In this video, we're going to talk about how to write a blog post. So first off is you need a topic. Now, um, this is something that you should have worked on last week. And if you're still having problems and you still want to uh, refine it a little bit, here's a repost of some of the information that I shared last week. So assuming you already have a topic, it's time to write the text of your blog. I've provided a file for you to download, which is a very basic outline just to get you started. And this is what it looks like. It has places for a headline, tells you where to insert a graphic, and stuff like that. I'm going to go over this in a little bit more detail in just a few minutes. All right, so one of the reasons you want to start writing your blog post in a word processing program, such as Microsoft Word, Google Docs, Notes, etc., is so that you can use spell check. So it'll check your spelling and grammar. This is so important because those little errors will make you look unprofessional. Another thing is word count. Your blog should be between 500 and 1200 words. So you need to go into enough detail to explain your topic, but not too much detail to make people stop reading halfway through. Pro tip, if you use Google Chrome as your browser, you can sign up for a free version of Grammarly and install a plugin. This means that as you type anywhere on the web, while using Chrome at least, Grammarly will show you your mistakes. So if you're typing in like Google uh, Docs, or if you decide in the future to start a blog and you want to just start typing in your blog instead of um, doing the whole Word, wor working in Word or whatever, um, you can have Grammarly checking things for you as you go. Okay, so um, this assignment you are going to be turning it in as a Word doc so I can check those things like your formatting, which I'll get to in a little bit, and checking your uh, spelling, checking things like your word count. So you will be turning this in as a doc or docx file. So if you start to feel a little lost when you try to write, do this. Imagine that you are talking to a friend and they ask you a question, which would be your topic. Now just start typing your response. Don't worry about all of these other things with spelling and grammar quite yet. Just go ahead and just start typing and get your thoughts out as quickly as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. Just start typing and then you can go back and edit for clarity. Now once you think you have finished editing, read the blog post out loud. Often our brains skip over our own mistakes when we're reading to ourselves. So by reading out loud, you're forcing your brain to read more carefully since you're sending that information to your mouth to speak. Okay, so don't forget to check your uh, spell check and your word count. So if you're working in Word, um, this is what it should end up looking like. So I typed out what I was doing and then put it in its, in its different places in that original document. So I have my headline, I have my introduction, I have my main text and you know places in between to add um, photos and such or your graphics if you're doing that all the way through and you'll notice that I actually used my lecture from how to shoot um, a headshot for LinkedIn for my blog post so that's a perfect example of how these things can go back and forth you can create a blog post you can then turn it into a video. And in fact, you're going to be creating a short video from your blog post with the information. So this is actually setting you up for your final project as well. All right, so I have everything laid out here. And at this point, I can go ahead and come up to tools and run spelling and grammar. Now it will go through and tell me what I need to change, how to take a headshot for your link profile using only your phone, and it's saying suggestions change to lowercase. Okay. Um, it's telling me, I don't think I need to say this, but take a shower into your hair. Okay. It says I don't actually need a comma there. So let's go ahead and change. And that was the only issues I had. Now again, I already wrote this out once um, for the lecture and I used Grammarly for that. And so there's really not a lot of changes, but go through and look at all the changes that it is telling you to look at and sometimes the changes won't be necessary but a lot of times they are. So once you're done with this we can also come up to tools 
and go to word count. And this is telling me that this has 763 words. Now some of these words are going to get changed out. Insert photo of professional look, insert photo of location and such. Um, but it won't be so much that it's going to take my word count down. In fact, I have a copy of the final one. And if I run my word count on this one, uh, tools, word count, we'll see that it went down to 652 words. So that's what I think around 100 words that got taken out. No problem. I'm still above the, uh, within the assignment requirements of 500 or 1200. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> so now that you've written out the text, you can start thinking of the photos and graphics that will work best to illustrate your blog post. You can type your ideas into the document and change these ideas into a different color. This is going to be important later on. And so um, just how I had showed you with this, with this one here, this insert photo of professional look that I put in red. And I already did this part for you in the basic outline, but this was just a tip for moving forward when you're writing your own blog post in the future. All right. So next you're going to create the photos and or graphics you need for your blog post. Being organized by saving them to one file is always helpful. Um, you do need one design that includes the name of your post and at least two other photos and or graphics throughout the post. So, for example, here I have my first graphic. It has the name of the post, how to shoot a headshot for LinkedIn. And then I have some more photos, and in this case they have text overlaid. So again, you need one design that includes the name of your post, and that's going to be it towards the top, and at least two other photos and or graphics throughout your post. Now, due to the pandemic and fires, it may be unsafe to take photos for this assignment, so I am going to allow you to use stock photos. Here are some places you can find free stock photos. The licensing are free, um, and this is for educational purposes. So as we just talked about ethics and licensing, educational purposes, you have a little bit more leeway on what you can use. So you can go ahead and look through here and look for the photos that you can use for your assignment. You can also use Google search tools. And how to find uh, photos that you can use is by one, going to google.com and typing in what you search for. In this case, I put in sunset. Once you search, go ahead and click on images. Then you can click on tools. This usage rights pop down will come up. You can click on here. Click on Creative Commons licenses. If you remember from the ethics video, um, that video that was embedded within there went over some of the common Creative Commons licenses. So if you didn't watch it, make sure you go back and watch so you can see what licenses you can use. All right. So now that you have your text and photos, it's time to put it all together by adding um, or inserting your graphics and images to your document. If you were publishing this to an actual blog, you can now copy and paste the text over and replace the insert photo notes and all that with your images. And the reason why I recommend changing these notes to another color is so you don't accidentally leave them in your blog post. <laughs> How awkward would that be where someone is um, going through your post and it says insert photo somewhere. You want to make sure you take those out. That's why I make them bright red. Now, don't forget to also indicate what is a heading and what is normal text. This is especially helpful for those who use screen readers, and therefore it makes your blog more accessible to more people. So let me show you what I mean. Let me go back to this other, uh, let's see, to this one here. And uh, so first of all, you're going to take out these things. Everything that's red needs to be either taken out or replaced with something else. So insert photo or graphic with headline text. I can go ahead and come up to insert. And this might, depending on what program you're using, it might look a little bit different. It might be up here instead. It might be like this. Either one works. I can click insert here and go to pictures, picture from file. Now I'm going to go and find that first one. Let's see, where did I do it with? 
Okay, there's my first graphic. And as you notice, I have them all in one folder here. Hit insert. And there it is. Sweet. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Now, what do I mean by the formatting? So if I come up here and I highlight my main headline or heading, you can see right up here, it says normal, no spacing, heading one, heading two, heading four. I'm going to click on heading one. This is my main heading. Okay, so now when someone uses a text reader, like let's say someone who's blind or legally blind, close to being blind, um, uses this text reader, it'll tell them that this is the headline. Now if I come down here, and I'm going to go ahead and get all of this together, uh, highlight all of this, and I'm going to click on normal. And now when someone's using a text reader, it will tell them that this is normal text. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and delete this part. I'm going to highlight the number one, and this is going to be a heading two. It's not the same heading. This is the main heading, but it's like a subheading. So I'm going to click on heading two, and now that is going to tell people that this is um, another heading, like a subheading. Come down here, normal, okay, insert the photo if you wanted to. I'm not inserting a photo for that one. Number two location, heading two, normal, insert photo of location. I'm going to go to insert, pictures, picture from file. And here's my location photo, insert, and so forth. And so you're just going to keep going through, making sure you're formatting and showing what's a header and what's normal text, inserting your photos and such. Now towards the bottom of this, um, I have the call to action. And a call to action is just a good thing to have in general at the end of your posts. You're asking people to interact with you, buy your product, follow you on other social media sites. So here's some examples. And this is also a great place to, you know, if you're working with another creative person to link to their blog or something like that. So here's a couple examples. Um, for the ask people to interact with you, I have try this out. Post your headshot in the comments below. I'd love to see your results. Okay, buy your product. Ready for a professional headshot? Click here to hire me to shoot your headshot. So this would be great for photographers. Like even though I'm helping people create a photo, um, this is also saying to people who are ready and can afford a professional headshot that I can help you with this too. And I've already shown above how to do a simple way. I'm already showing that I know what I'm doing. So now I can show you, now you can hire me to do a professional headshot. <clears throat> Um, follow you on other social media sites. So um, for more tips on social media and photography, sign up for one of my classes or subscribe to my YouTube channel. And offer ways to get more similar information. Here is a full video showing the above process. So I could actually insert my full YouTube video here or I could just link my YouTube video so that they'll be forced to go to my YouTube channel and hopefully subscribe. All right, so once you've done all that, here's an example of what the finished assignment should look like. We have our headers, we have our graphic, all of our different tips, extra um, photos. And because this is a Word document, that's why there's all this extra space is because these photos are, you know, large. So therefore they added that extra space. That's no big deal for this assignment. Of course, with your blog post, that extra space wouldn't be there. All right. And then you can also throw in your links. So I kept a couple of those different call to actions down at the bottom. I have click here to watch my full video showing the above process, which links to my YouTube video. Um, for more tips on social media and photography, sign up for one of my classes. I've linked the Fresno City College website or subscribe to the YouTube channel. Try this and post your headshots. I'd love to see your results. Feel free to contact me with feedback and suggestions. And there's my email. So um, having that contact information is also a good idea at the bottom. You want people to be able to get a hold of you. 
So uh, one more thing I forgot to show you is how to link things in here. So let's say I wanted to come here and sign up for one of my classes at Fresno City College. All right, let's go. Here I have the Fresno City College website. I come up here. I select the website. Hit Command Copy, Command C. You can also go to Edit Copy, same thing, Command C. Come back over here. Select the words that I want to be, to be linked to. I'm going to click on Insert and Link. Then I can go ahead and paste, Command V. Hit OK. So now, if this was my blog post, someone could click on here and it would automatically open to the Fresno City College website. Okay, okay, so I hope this has helped you out. Um, try not to get overwhelmed. Just take it step by step, like I've laid it out in the assignment, and you will get to write your blog post. And don't forget, have fun.